please. Chairman Carson? Here. Councilor Berry? Here. Councilor Fritz? Here. Councilor, Councilor McGinty? Here. Councilor Roberts? Here. Councilor Swift Kayata? Here. Councilor Watson? Representative Clucci? Here. Representative Elia? Here. And Michael McGovern? Here. And Town Clerk? Present. <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I always say my Reports and correspondence. Yes, Councillor Roberts. Thank you, Madam Chairman. A couple of weeks ago, I had the pleasure of uh, stopping by the uh, fire station and was able to present the plaque uh, recognizing Mike, uh, Michael Walsh for 29 years of service on, uh, on behalf of the council. It was, uh, there was quite a, a decent attendance. Uh, Mike has done a great job over the years, and he seemed to be quite well respected. In the future, however, I would suggest that we might want to make those plaques a little less wordy. I didn't think I was going to get through it. <laughs> but Mike did a great job. And then I'd also like to, um, my father passed away about a week ago, and I, the town manager came up to the funeral in Bangor. I've received an awful lot of uh, cards from councillors and from residents, and I really appreciate them very much. And I'd just like to say thank you for all your support. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Roberts, um, my goodness, I, I have to say to these old councillors down here that we got a real old councillor walking across the back of the room. Former <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I have a great pleasure right now. For my friend. We're going to turn around so that the uh, cameras, wherever they are, can come and see you. This is Matthew. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'd like to be able to read this without my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight it is my honor to present the Ralph T. Gould Award for the year 2000. This award, established in 1986, was named for the late Ralph Gould to recognize his community service and subsequently to recognize those who provide community service in the same spirit as Ralph Gould. Recipients as Mr. Gould have been Paul Orchid, Judith Simons, Dick O'Donnell, Henry Adams, the late Loretta Pond, E. Irving Chapel, Peter and Alice Rand, the late John Sibley, Wendy Dershowitz and Ellen Van Fleet, William H. Jordan, and last year's recipient, Jimmy Murray, our longtime deputy fire chief. All of them provided exemplary service to Cape Elizabeth over many years. However, <laughs> tonight we add someone who has given service to the town of Cape Elizabeth and to the state of Maine. Eight pages. <laughs> the year 2000 recipient of the Ralph T. Gould Award is Nancy Nye Masterton. Nancy Masterton moved to Cape Elizabeth in 1962 from Minnesota. A native of Massachusetts, Nancy quickly became active in civic affairs in Cape Elizabeth. She joined the League of Women Voters and served as the area and state president. She became a member of the Cape Elizabeth Planning Board, of which she has just recently um, finished her term, I believe, right? In 1976, she was elected to the Maine Legislature, where she distinguished herself as a member of the Influential Appropriations Committee. Upon her retirement, after four terms as a legislator, she was elected to the Cape Elizabeth Town Council, and she served from 1984 to 1990. During her tenure, she chaired the Finance Committee, the Ordinance Committee, the Appointments Committee, and she served as chairman of the town council. She was a member of the sewer study committee, which recommended the current town sewering plan. She also served on the town's charter review committee, commission, and on the affordable housing study committee. 
After her retirement from the town council, several years later, she rejoined the planning board where she has just recently finished her term. Nancy also served as a trustee of the Portland Public Library, the Cumberland County Charter Commission, and as a member of the Maine Board of Environmental Protection and on the Maine Arts Commission. She was a trustee of the Maine Historical Society and the United Way and several United Way committees. While all of this information is biographical, it does little to truly capture the spirit of Nancy. She has been a strong advocate of democracy, a never ceasing protector of the environment, a voice for the arts and against censorship, and has defended the need for an exceptional system of public higher education in Maine. She was an extremely devoted wife to an equally dedicated person of much public spirit, the late Robert Masterton. She is a mother of Peter and Laurie, and is a grandmother who finds great enjoyment in spending time with her family. Nancy has a wonderful sense of humor, and her integrity and character have inspired many to public service. On behalf of the entire town of Cape Elizabeth, and all the citizens of Cape Elizabeth, it gives me great pleasure to present to Nancy Nye Masterton the year 2000 Ralph Gould Award. This plaque presented by the town of Cape Elizabeth is a lasting symbol of our appreciation of our most valuable contributions to the town of Cape Elizabeth, the Ralph Gould Award. Congratulations. <laughs> Uh, a few words, only a few. I'm all choked up. Uh, save that. I'm going to save it for, for you. So you'll know what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm completely overwhelmed. Um, I've enjoyed my service to the town. Um, I wouldn't have done it otherwise. It's been fun. Not always fun, but um, it's enjoyment and a sense of service that makes it worthwhile. Um, in closing, because I tend to be brief, knowing that you have a council meeting and I've been there before, I want to quote Thomas Paine who said, government, like dress, is the badge of lost innocence. And I've enjoyed serving it with my clothes on. <laughs> Thank you. Well, no, 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 no obituaries yet. <laughs> What did you do in your spare time is what I wanted to <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> and, and Jimmy was there. Jimmy came to watch Nancy get it because he got it last year. Jimmy, here I come. I'll give you a hug today, Congratulations. Well done. Well. That was such fun, it's hard to believe we have to get on with items on the agenda now. Well, I had one uh, other thing yes. I wanted to mention, Councilor Madam Barry. Chairman, on the, way, uh, in the, in the way of reports and correspondence, perhaps. I've just received uh, a notice from uh, Bob Malley and the crew of the Public Works Department. I think the folks at home might like to know that they're going to uh, have an open house over at the new Public Works facility over here. It's scheduled for Saturday, January 27th from 9, to, uh, 9 in the morning to 1 in the afternoon. And um, all the citizens are invited to uh, drop by and inspect the equipment and meet some other department personnel. And uh, on the tail of that announcement, I would like to compliment the fellows who uh, did the plowing in Cape Elizabeth. During the snowstorm a couple of weeks ago on a Saturday night, I had occasion to drive home from New Hampshire to Cape Elizabeth, and we had the best uh, plowed out streets of any community along the way. So congratulations to Bob Malley and all the crew, and that will be uh, on the 27th of January 
from 9 to 1. Thank you. Thank you very much. I guess I won't have to announce that one, will I? There you go. <laughs> um, town manager, any more correspondence or reports from councillors? Town manager's report, please. Yes, th thank you, Madam Chairman. A uh, couple of quick items. First of all, I do want to make mention, as, as Councillor Berry alluded to, is that Public Works is now uh, at the new Public Works garage on uh, Cooper Drive. If citizens are trying to reach them of late, they may notice that they're getting an answering machine all the time. That's because the phone service is not yet on site. We expect it uh, any day now, and we appreciate citizens' patience. Uh, the good news is this past weekend, the dispatch center, which for the last 25 or so years has been at the Public Safety Building, has now moved over to the town center fire station, otherwise known as the former public works garage. So anyone that has any need at any time, day or night, uh, seven days a week to speak to a dispatcher, one can call or two can uh, visit them there at, at that new building. Uh, thirdly, I'd like to make mention that, uh, Patsy's, Patsy's around, that the town planner has uh, just prepared a new open space trails map uh, that you see over here on the board and smaller versions of it are being distributed amongst the council. And that shows this month, uh, this, this is rare enough for everyone, a big blotch of uh, green offshore road. And what that blotch of green is, is uh, a new acquisition of the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust known as the Robinson Parcel. There appears to be some confusion as to its actual location. As you look at the two stone pillars across from Pond Cove that enter the so-called Robinson property. The property that the land trust has acquired is on the right side of those pillars. It's the woods, it's the Kirby section of Shore Road. Uh, the left side is still owned uh, by the Timothy Robinson family, separate from the John Robinson family. And there's some confusion amongst the public as to what the land trust acquired. For that reason, as well as for one of the council goals of making better known the town's open space and trails map. Uh, in the next uh, month or so, Maureen is going to be finalizing this map as, it now, as of the effective date and putting text on the back of it. And we're actually going to have this printed in color and put as a supplement in the Cape Coria so that Great. for once uh, the town will get out a, uh, a current map of all the trails uh, along with Tech showing some caveats in terms of what's permitted and what isn't, and some some of the different issues on that land. So I'd like to congratulate the land trust on the acquisition of that parcel. Uh, the town council will likely be considering next month whether or not to apply the contribution of the $250,000 uh, that had been set aside to assist in in that purchase. The council earlier voted the money, but not for any specific project, although it was known to the council at the time that it was for, for that particular land. Uh, one final mention is the assessor search committee met this afternoon consisting of Councillor Berry, Councillor Fritz, and Councillor Ann Swift Kayata. Uh, they have authorized me conditionally to speak to a finalist candidate, and if all goes well with that, uh, the town council has a workshop scheduled for Wednesday night with the Cape Elizabeth School Board, and if that process goes well tomorrow with reviewing the candidate's qualifications and looking at other issues, uh, as one always does, uh, we would perhaps have a special council meeting on Wednesday night following the workshop with the school board. The location of that meeting will be over at the, I'm trying to think what they call the room, be over in the, the middle school where we've met before. It's the, the old Omec room. It's the teacher's lounge. It's the, the meeting with the school board is in that room. It starts at 6.30, uh, 6.15, is it 6.15? What's the notice? 6.30. 6.30 with a dinner, and then you'll begin the workshop with the, with the school board around 7.15, and then the, there'd be a single item council agenda following the workshop on whether or not the council would choose to appoint this individual as the assessor. Uh, the, I think, you know, it is a council appointment, but I was really pleased with the, the efforts of the three council members in uh, meeting with uh, the candidates, and we were pleased to have uh, a number of uh, really good candidates to replace Bob Ponzel, whose last day was uh, Friday. Thank you, Madam. Uh, have we enough notice for that uh, meeting? We, the, the rule is, is yeah. we have to, 
attempt to give 24 hours notice to each councillor. Uh, councillor uh, Ruth McClary Watson is unable to be here this evening, but we will leave notice within that 24 hours right. uh, at her address. Okay. Uh, but uh, the public uh, notice is covered. The public notice is covered. And that right. is a public meeting. That's a public meeting, yes. And if anyone wishes to know the intended candidate, uh, you know, the, the assuming all goes well, the resume would go out to the council uh, late tomorrow, and that becomes a public record at that point of who that committee is recommending. Okay. Thank you very much. Are there any citizens' discussion of items that are not on the agenda? Thank you. Hearing none, we'll move to the next item, which I don't have. None of us did. The minutes Wait. of the last meeting. I did not receive them either. No. So I don't think anyone has them in their packet. So no. we will dispense hmm. with that and go for the next, uh, and do the December 11th, 2000 meeting at our next regular council meeting. Right. Okay. Item number 63. Action upon proposal to create a community center planning committee. Um, this is an item that we have discussed at an earlier time. And um, this is now time for uh, some action. It is appropriate to, to, approve, to approve this plan as we've written it out I, for I council, have, for committee order. Yes. If you want, you want a motion first, or I have a, a couple yes, questions. Yes, a motion would be great. Okay, I move that we adopt the community center uh, planning committee draft charge as presented. I second it. Okay. Moved and seconded. Further discussion, please. Councilor McGinty. On the third bullet in the first paragraph uh -huh. there we called, um, first of all, I think it needs to be reworded. Um, I, I think the community said, uh, it reads, uh, make a recommendation to the town council on the disposition of the current community center at 1226 Shore Road. I think oh. it said whether it should be retained right. or something like that. Sure. And also, I would like to expand that, that not only should they look at whether it should be um, retained or sold, but what uses it may fit in with the, the as, as they develop what they're going to do with 343 Ocean House, what purpose or uses mm -hmm. this building could have either in that, you know, broad uh, charge of the community center or some other use, um, not just simply whether it should be retained or sold, but what uses in that overall charge. We probably didn't talk about that at our, when we tried to put this together a little bit, but I think uses is appropriate. So you could I, think, I think you did. Did we? You did talk about that that uh, correction, whether whether or not. And I missed it in the <laughs> edit job, so thank you. Okay. Yeah, we'll correct the, the, the grammar the time. grammar on that yeah. sentence, and we'll add the word uses. Okay. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Did yeah. you have any more? Um, there's another. Um, small change that I think needs to be made under committee structure in the second line it says the town council and the community services advisory commission shall have two representatives I think it should be shall each have two representatives yeah, that would be all right chosen by their respective chairs mm -hmm. that's good and any other changes that anyone sees is there a specific uh, amount of uh, money put aside for this? Are we going to limit to any? We, I would, there, there isn't, if, if I might, Madam yeah, Chairman, yeah. there isn't a specific proposal. My hope would be as the committee evolves and, you know, we could be talking quite a bit of money here to, to actually hire someone to do the, the specific design. And uh, I would like that to come back to the council. Okay. Said separately, they, you know, we'll, we're going to spend some money for surveying and that type of thing separate. But when it comes for the, the the major contract for whoever's going to be doing the architectural work that serves with this group, that would come back to the council. Okay, thank Th you. This does not lay out that this committee is responsible for design work, though. Does it? I mean, I'm not expecting this committee well, necessarily. It may end up working on design, but it's going to be heading in that direction because it, it does require the, the the development of a cost estimate or any proposed alteration. So they will need to do, uh, not to the point of final design, right. but they will have to do some schematic designs. Okay. And, you know, inevitably, once you start down that road, you start talking dollars. So yeah. that's the mm -hmm. time to come back to the council before we get in too deep. All right. Anything else? If not, we can call the question. 
All those in favor of the Community Center Planning Committee as it's written? And amended. And amended, right? Opposed, none. Thank you. That's nice. We'll be nice to actually to see that. We don't have a, um, excuse me. Oh, yes, we do. All right. Item number 64, action to authorize a lease of soon to be owned municipal property at 343 Ocean House Road to the Pond Cove Millwork and the Pond Cove Paint. Now in your packet, you see that we have had the leases, draft leases drawn up. Do you want to comment about anything particular? No, just that, uh, yeah, yes, why did I say no? Yes, I do. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, Penny, uh, Council Chairman Carson, uh, and I uh, met with George Gagnon uh, sometime in, uh, I think it was mid-December, uh, over breakfast one morning and uh, discussed the, our desire to be mutual amongst everyone to have Ponco Millwork and Ponco Paint stay in the, this building for, for a year or so, or up to a year, fully allowing George Gagnon, the owner of the businesses here, to have some flexibility if he find, when he finds some other space to go out and to do that. He indicated that He's obviously looking aggressively for space for the Pond Cove Millwork and has had some, some success, but has also encountered some issues. And he also is, is interested in perhaps having Pond Cove Paint stay here even beyond for a longer period. For that reason, we set up two separate leases. Uh, the leases give uh, the Pond Cove Millwork or Pond Cove Paint the opportunity to leave, to leave the lease with a 30-day notice. Uh, at any point during the lease. However, the town is committed. On the other hand, on the other side, if he wishes to stay for the full year, he's welcome to do that. The payments are structured, too, so that there's an encouragement for him to stay in the shorter term during the winter to pay the heating bills to reduce the town's potential cost. Uh, as, and then it increases as time goes on, with the thought being that maybe he won't be in the building anymore. So it, it is structured in a way favorable to George Gagnon in, in many respects in order, you know, out of respect for the good work of this business, the desires of the town council that you, uh, and I think of the public when this issue was very hotly debated, uh, in it, that, you know, we want to be just as fair and reasonable to this business as possible because there are a lot of folks that work there that are very important to the local economy and uh, to the success of this business. So it is structured in a way that the town does get a significant return from the, the structure, but will get a more significant return for the, the longer period if, if he stays in. It does provide, however, that after 12 to 13 months, the millwork portion would be abandoned. Uh, the, the 13th month is here, but it, it's much more flexible in terms of uh, its terms. Uh, but, you know, that's essentially, it's a triple net lease. Uh, I think it's just a, a good situation for both the business and for uh, the town. If you notice, the draft motion says uh, that you would authorize me to sign it in conformance with something with the town attorney and such form as the town attorney may approve. Uh, Tom Leahy, the town attorney, just got this to us uh, last Friday, I believe. We immediately delivered it to George Gagnon. He, I assume he's having his attorney look at it, you know, there might be some changes slightly in some of the issues, but basically, you know, those rental amounts, I understand, would be what the council is approving and would like to keep that language in there, uh, giving the town attorney some flexibility if George Gagnon's attorney responds with, would like something a little bit different that uh, we could accomplish that. Uh, uh, Barry. One minor point here, I, I noticed a, uh, in, in reading over the weekend, I, I noticed it says a triple N. Did it mean uh, a triple net? I've, uh, in leases, I've seen it referred to as triple net. One and the same. And uh, I just, maybe uh, if it were the word net in there, it wouldn't be misunderstood. I understand what the intent is. Yeah, they work, it works either way. We'd be happy to do that. Any other questions on the lease? It's pretty, pretty basic. It's mostly what we discussed. Right. I, I really think the lease works well for both parties. It, it gives us a good tenant. It takes care of the millworks' needs for, for up to a year. And uh, I think, uh, you know, despite a lot of the discussion at the council meetings, uh, I'm not speaking for Penny, but I think we, we had a very cordial, uh, very friendly uh, 
breakfast with George, and the town was happy to pay for it. Yeah. And uh, it was it was just a uh, thank you for breakfast, Madam Chairman. Yeah, we, uh, well, we were able to talk, talk about some of the things that were going to go into the lease in a very pleasant atmosphere and uh, work them out. So. And the fact that Mike Chitwood came two tables next to it had nothing to do with <laughs> the thought we might need to be there. <laughs> we were joking about that. One. Yeah. He's out of his jurisdiction. So. Well, I will move that the town manager be authorized to sign a lease with Pond Cove Millwork and Pond Cove Paint in a form acceptable to the town attorney. Second, second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. I don't get that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Is there any further discussion on that? All those in favor? Opposed? None? We, we wanted to make sure that somebody else got a chance to have their name on, them, on, on these upcoming minutes. Henry said that's why Jack got to do the seconding. I didn't hear him. <laughs> uh, item number 65, action to consider a proposed vision and goal statement of the Cape Elizabeth Greenbelt. Also it's in our packet, something that we've been working on for many years in Cape Elizabeth. Do you want to comment on this too? Yeah, just very briefly. And first of all, I want to thank the Conservation Commission for all of their efforts. Uh, in preparing this Greenbelt plan update the vision and goals. The Greenbelt first was a thought of the uh, townspeople of Cape Elizabeth, uh, I think well over 25 years ago now, through the, the wisdom of Peter Rand and uh, Nat Clifford, uh, Bill Wadman, uh, and a, a number of other uh, very dedicated citizens. Uh, the current, excuse me, the current Conservation Commission uh, spent an awful lot of time on this. There's two members here this evening. Uh, Mike Duddy and John Herrick, uh, relatively new members of the commission, but you know it's it's really although John I know has been around a long time, it's you know it's really good to see the the, the focus on the green belt continuing uh, as it has for the last 25 years and really being put to paper as to what the priorities are and exactly how it should be treated. This was an issue that uh, came up very strongly at the council level about a year ago in terms of what materials ought to be used and uh, in treating it and what should be its form of maintenance and really where it ought to go and what it ought to be now. So I think, you know, while the councilors may have individual points, I, when you look at the draft, I think it's just a tremendous effort on the part of the commission and the planner. And it also, uh, I think, interestingly enough, when this vision started in 74, if you had gotten out that map, uh, then you would have seen a couple of state parks and. Fort Williams and a couple of other small parcel school grounds, and it just shows that the vision of uh, 25 years ago is, is very much coming to reality, uh, and with a few other acquisitions and parcels, and with the vision and goals as stated in this plan, uh, that map can even fill in even more in terms of the links and the connections, and uh, hopefully having an ongoing maintenance plan. So I would encourage the council to give this uh, favorable consideration. Thank you. Maureen's here to answer yes. any questions, and if mm. the Conservation Commission members aren't too shy, they might be willing to answer questions. I don't look too shy to me. I recognize them. <laughs> but Madam other Chairman. issues, John. Madam yes, Chairman. Councilor Roberts. Are we to just accept this as is, or can we make recommendation uh, for changes, or do we have questions? Uh, I, I on was this? wondering if maybe we could send this to a workshop so we could talk, because I have some questions that I don't really think, I mean, that need to be talked about more than. I, mean, I don't have a problem with the overall plan, but I do have some specific questions, um, including do dollar amounts for some of this and some other. Yeah. There, there was a reason I said you ought to give it favorable consideration, and that you, I didn't say you ought to adopt it. I, yeah. I, I oh, chose okay. my oh, words okay. carefully, re, yeah. you know, thinking that you might want to uh, move it in that direction. Yeah. 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 Did you just did you make that motion? I would move that we accept the uh, report and refer it to workshop for further discussion by the town council. That's good. Second. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion on that? I'd like to say overall, I think it's an excellent, excellent oh, report, fabulous. and uh, you know, I think it hits it right, right on the, the head. It's a great mm -hmm. report. I just have a few questions and so. I I don't know if um, if we in the town have the information or, or you have the information, but I think that Cape Elizabeth is very far ahead of other communities mm. in ownership of public lands and making lands available to citizens in their community. Uh, certainly with the purchase of the, this last piece of land, it really does fill out the map. But I, we are so grateful for the work of so many citizens over the last 25 years and for this present board that put together this report. 
Councillor Fritz, did you have something? Well, I just I wanted to uh, commend the Commission as well. I mean, we had one workshop with the Commission, um, and I think there's a lot of improvement in, in the shape of this um, between then and now. Um, I just think there are a lot of really important concepts in it, the particularly um, providing, you know, connections between neighborhoods and um, not having highly structured trails, um, that they be more natural and, uh, and require minimum improvements. And I just think that there's an awful lot of reason to have this uh, green belt concept and that it move forward with priorities and, and the implementation plan because that's the way I think we get it done more. I think we need more education uh, of the public where it is and, and certainly this green belt map is going to be very helpful um, that Maureen has put together. Um, and I guess it saddens me when I go out into the woods and I don't see kids uh, taking advantage of, of the woods and, and our green belt. And I hope that maybe with trail marking and mapping and more use, uh, we'll have kids, you know, being more willing to um, use it and maybe parents being more willing. So I, I think we'll look, you know, to the workshop for more details. So. Thank you. Hearing any more comments? All those in favor? Opposed? None. Thank you very much. I think the kids probably know where there really are some trails that we don't even know about. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Item number 66, action to consider providing the planning board a deadline of April 1st, 2001 to submit to the town council any proposed zoning ordinance amendments relating to non-conforming lots. Sarah, in your packet, that, uh, in the earlier packet that I had sent a letter to the planning board, and in this packet was a letter from the planning board to us uh, describing what they were doing and what was taking the time. They had mentioned the end of March, and we have just simply put it date April 1st um, for them to complete this job. We all have a lot of opinions about this. This we'll wait till we have this discussion with them. Are they going to be able to get it done? I believe so. They plan to get it done by the end of March, and so we've just simply just put the date in April first. As a suggestion or as a motion? It's a suggestion. One of you people have to make a motion. Well, I, I, I don't think. Well, all right. Unless there's a motion, I guess it's not yet appropriate for discussion. No. No, we're waiting for a motion. The motion is set the deadline of April 1st for the planning board to report back to us on this item. So moved. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Discussion, please, on this item. Councillor Barry. I, I think that's uh, maybe pushing them too much. If uh, they have uh, quite a lot of lots to look at here, I know that working with the town planner, they have uh, a lot of work ahead of them. If they think they can do it by April 1st, fine, but I don't think we should hold them to a deadline because this is an important decision, and if they need a little more time, I think they should have it. So I think we can uh, suggest that they try to complete their work by the end of March, but if they need a little more time, we shouldn't hold them to a deadline uh, it's, uh, because they have a lot of uh, business to think over here and a lot of records to examine. Councilor Swift-Cater. Um, Madam Chair, I was just looking at the letter Peter Cotter, the Planning Board Chair, had sent to us as members of the Town Council. And in the last paragraph, he, uh, representing the, the Planning Board, uh, requests that the Town Council grant the Planning Board sufficient time to complete the analysis and make a recommendation by the end of March 2001. So I, okay. I thought from his letter that he right. was saying that that was the deadline that they wanted. And we were just tacking one extra day onto it by saying April 1st. Right. Because so. it was more definite than saying the end of March. That's all. It was more definite. Council so I, I thought that was the deadline they had asked for. I, I think the, the town planner has indicated that they can get the work done by that date. And if you remember, the letter that was sent before was, was we really asked the planning board to move on this. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and that, okay, so. I mean, I don't, I don't want to imply to the planning board that we are urging them to send us an amendment to the ordinance. 
to the zoning ordinance. Them to send the report. Yeah. An analysis, but not necessarily. It doesn't have to be a change in the ordinance. Yeah, it would. It, excuse me. With the agenda, since to to submit any any proposed, proposed. zoning ordinance. Right. right. Yeah. It doesn't say they have to propose anything. Right. Well, if they need more time, they can come back and ask us for it. Yeah. So I don't object to that. I just want to make sure they have, a, a, well, in their words, uh, sufficient time. What would they say? Uh, That's right. Sufficient time to complete the final analysis. And, uh, so I think uh, they, they should have sufficient time to be comfortable with it. If, if April 1st is it, then fine. We sent it back to the planning board, if you remember, last May. I know. Yeah. I know. Okay. It needs to take, take time. If they don't get it in by April 1, we'll dock their wages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> their non-existent wages. <laughs> All right. Ready to move the question? All those in favor? Opposed? None? Thank you very much. We just set the date for the April 1st um, time for the RAT report. That concludes the regular uh, item. Madam Chair. Yep. Could I ask to bring item number 57 of December 11 from the Appointments Committee uh, back to uh, oh. add one additional name that was inadvertently left off? I'm not sure what the correct procedure for doing that is, but... I just add it as a new item number yeah. 67. We'll just, that's right. Six, item number 67. Suspend the rules to take an item out of order. Yeah. I move that we suspend the rules to, uh, to, uh, to take up uh, item 67. Well, to take up out of 57, is it no, really? 67. 67. We'll, we'll add a known. I said 67. S second. It's been moved <laughs> to second to spend the rules to take an item up out of order. All those in favor? Opposed, none. Okay. At the last town council meeting, um, one name was inadvertently left off the list of the appointments, and that was Peter Rich, who uh, should be reappointed for a three year term on the recycling committee. Uh, expiring on January 1, 2004. He was serving an unexpired term previously, and I'm not sure how, he's, how his name got off the, that list, but it certainly was not intended, and we want to keep Peter on that committee. So I would move that uh, Peter Rich be uh, reappointed for a second three-year term. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in I favor? think it's interesting that uh, Peter Rich is probably uh, our outstanding cyclist yeah. for the town of Cape Elizabeth, and uh, in order that he be recycling, I yeah, think that's I appropriate. <laughs> All those in favor? <laughs> Opposed, none. Thank you. Are there any uh, items not on the agenda for citizens' discussion? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. I move we adjourn. Sorry, moved and seconded. All those in favor? We will be adjourning to a uh, council workshop. The topics of the workshop will include the follow-up on the recommendations of the Historic Preservation Study Committee and a review of the progress on the annual goals of the town council which we set each year and a mid-year financial report by the manager. Those are the items we will take up by the, at, the work, at the workshop discussion. And any of you citizens who wish to stay for that, are welcome to do so. Thank you very much and good evening.